Hi everyone. In this lecture, we'll learn how to log users out and sign them in automatically. Before diving into the detail, let's see where we're at. Let's sign in using an existing user account. All right, great. We authenticated the user and then switch view smoothly. We now learn how to log users out. Let's say we want a log we want a log out button in the home view. So we're going to add a button to this home view controller for this purpose. We do that by searching for a bar button item in the object library. Then drag it to this home navigation controller and then give it a meaningful name. All right, great. Now let's create an IB action in the home view controller to code up its functionality. Follow our convention. We name this log out touch up inside and choose action for the connection type. As with sign in, we're going to utilize the Firebase authentication package. So let's import it here and create an instance of the FIR auth class. Okay. All right, there's only one method for signing users out. This method can potentially throw an error. So we need to use a do catch procedure with the try keyword before the function call. And the function call needs to be inside the do block because the method might throw an error. We must catch it and handle it properly. Let's define some constant to hold that error. For our simplicity, let's just print out the error. Okay, good. Let's see what we should do. Okay, let's print out the current Firebase user to see if we indeed unauthenticate that user. We can, un we can access the current Firebase user via the current property of the shared instance of the FIR auth class. Let's print this out before and after the logout process finishes. Okay. 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 All right. Let's sign in using an existing user account, like user1 at gmail.com, password, and then sign in. Okay, it succeeded. Let's log out and keep an eye on the console. Great. Before locking out, the current user exists and we can print it out. After that, there's no current user. Pretty simple, right? However, we're not done yet. We still need to switch to the sign in view controller. Note that we we'll always want to come back to sign in after logging out. Our idea is to present it from the tab bar controller. To access it, we need to access the start storyboard where it lives in. So let's first create a constant named storyboard which is a UI storyboard object, and connect it to the start storyboard. We make that connect via the name parameter, which should be start in this case. We use nil for bundle to access the main bundle of the app. We can now create an UI view controller object here in the source code using the instantiate view controller method, and then connect it to the sign in view controller via the with identifier parameter. This identifier will be the storyboard ID of this viewed controller. We use the class name for it, but you're free to choose this storyboard ID as you like. All right, great. We're able to access the sign in view controller here. Now simply present this sign in view controller object using the present method. Note here that we can also use the dismiss method here. As the tab bar controller is present modally by the sign in and sign up view controllers, we can simply dismiss it after the logout process. However, here we always want to display the sign in view after logging out. So we'll explicitly present it. We can do that by call the present method on the instance of this home view controller. The first input is whatever we want to present, which is the sign in view controller. So we need a constant to hold the sign in view controller instance we created before, then input it into the, pre into the present method. The other parameters can just be set to default as usual. By the way, we don't need the printing stuff anymore. All right, let's check it out. Okay. All 
right. Let's see. Okay, let's sign in. All right. And great. Now, let's log out of this account. Fantastic. But why stop here if we can do so much more? An important feature is to log users in automatically if their credentials are still stored in the device. If users weren't previously logged out, their credentials are still accessible. In particular, in this case, the Firebase current users are not nil, and we can based on that to authenticate the users automatically. It's probably a good idea that whenever the sign in view controller is launched, we'll log a user in if she or he is still the current Firebase user. Therefore, we'll see if the current Firebase user is not nil in the view did load method of the sign in view controller. If that's the case, we can simply switch to this tab bar controller. In this case, we don't need to re-authenticate the user as this user was authenticated already. Actually, let's just reuse the switching view code from the sign in button method. All right, let's see. We're not a hundred percentage if this percent sure if this is gonna work, but uh, let's see. The idea seems right, but might need some subtle tweaking. Okay. All right. Okay, let's sign in using an existing account first. All right. Good. Now we can just rerun the app without logging out to pretend that users turned it off without signing it out. Okay. Okay, the view didn't switch. Something is probably wrong here. To make sure if the perform to, to make sure if the perform segu method is reachable, let's print out the Firebase current user. Let's use string interpolation so that we can spot this line easier in the console. All right. Okay. Let's see. If the current user is not nil, then the perform segu method is definitely reachable. If that's the case, we probably call it a wrong time or wrong place. Okay, let's see. Let's find the current user stuff in the console. Okay, here it is. This is the Firebase current user, which is not nil. So the perform segu is reachable, but didn't get called. After the view did load method, the sign in view is simply loaded into the memory. It's not actually attached to the view hierarchy. Basically, it hasn't appeared yet. Therefore, it can't perform the segu that we want it to do. This means we probably called this perform segu method at a wrong time or wrong place. To be sure, let's delay this task for a large amount of time using the scheduled timer method of the timer class. Let's say two seconds. We don't need to repeat this task. We then do what we want to do in this block after two seconds. And what we want to do is to perform the segu. Okay, good. We simply want to delay this task for a significant amount of time to see if the result gives us any insight. Just like doing math proofs, examining extreme cases often gains us a lot of insight into the problems. Okay, it works. This means we tried to perform this task too early. It also means that after two seconds, some methods of the sign in view controller were executed, making it work. Let's try to do it by overriding the view did appear method. We need to call the view did load method of the super class. This is a basic setup when overriding this type of method. In order to perform some sort of basic function in the super class method. Okay, now that our sign in view did appear on the screen with some basic functions executed, let's try to perform the segu now. Okay, good. Let's take a look of, at the references of these methods to see if we're on a right track. All right, this is not what we want to see. We want to see the reference for the view did load method. Okay, here it is. Here is its basic functionality. You can see that Apple suggests us to override this method to perform presenting view stuff. All right, let's see what we should do in the view did load method. So 
whatever we specify in this method will be called after the view is loaded into memory, which means the view is not displayed or visible yet. So we can't perform presenting view tasks at this point. All right, great. Let's clean this up and move everything to the view did appear method. All right, we know that it's not appropriate to perform this task here. We switch view after we're certain that the user is still authenticated. All right, let's clean this up, then run the app. Note that we haven't logged the current user out. So when the app runs, the Firebase current user is not nil, and we expect that the view will be switched automatically. All right, fantastic. Now we know this is the right answer. To be sure, let's log the current user out. Then rerun the app. We need to make sure that in this case, the view won't be switched as in the previous case. Great, there is no Firebase user now, so the view doesn't switch. Next time, we'll dig deeper on the best coding practices. See you then.